Okay, so for those of you who are just joining us now, I am Naomi Johnson and I work for Really Connect. Um, we are the world's leading uh, LinkedIn training organization and today is session four in our series and we're going to be covering how to create a LinkedIn profile that will get you noticed and followed. Um, so throughout the day, throughout the session, I'm going to be jumping from slides back onto the LinkedIn profile. Some very kind people have said, yes, you can use my profile publicly and are going to let me give them public feedback. Um, so in our series, you can see there we've got many um, coming up. If you haven't uh, watched the previous ones, they are now all available for you on reallyconnect.com forward slash webinars. You can um, get access to them there and please do share them with your colleagues. There's some really useful um, content in there. Um, and this is a recap for those of you who haven't been with us before or don't know who we are. These are some of the, the biggest companies that we've worked for, some of the household names you'll know. We've actually worked with um, a lot of small businesses actually and we've managed to put 4.3 million of new business into our clients pipeline in the last six months. So what we do definitely gets results. Um, this is my trusted colleague, Mike, Mike Clark, who you would have met on the previous webinars, passionate about small business, marketing and training and sales. Um, and this is our master trainer, Bert Verdonk. He's a keynote speaker on LinkedIn and a creative life hacker, uh, author of six books, actually. And what he doesn't know about LinkedIn isn't worth knowing. Um, I ask him questions nearly all the time. <laughs> um, and this is myself, I am Naomi Johnson. I've been with Really Connect now for a year and I've spoken with over 150 uh, businesses actually, giving them consultations on their profile and feedback. And I have three years worth of small business experience and even written a book about it called Grassroots to Green Shoots. So that's who we are. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let's crack on. How to create a LinkedIn profile that gets you noticed. Um, really big topic. Um, your personal brand is exactly what LinkedIn is about. It, your, your profile is about you and who you are and it's representing yourself. So I've got some uh, different scenarios here that I want us to go through to really consider um, what your personal brand is. So I've pretty much covered everybody I think and if I haven't please do um, actually post in the questions and ask questions as we go throughout. I'll keep checking them. So to do, do that, we're going to run for about half an hour and I can do lots more questions at the end as well. Um, brilliant. So let's see now. If you are a self-employed person, you will, you will be asking about the um, your profile. Does it speak about your business or does it speak about you as an employee? This is a really interesting one because I've seen so many profiles of business owners who want to market their business and all they do is talk about how employable they are. Um, and what they have, what skills they've got, what they've achieved in the past, and pretty much putting out a message of I should be employed, but they they actually want to be leading with a message of their business and their company and what their company does. Um, we then have, on the other hand, we have the employed. They are looking for a job or are or potentially being um, headhunted, or we have the employed, but they're not looking for a job. And um, they just they just got a LinkedIn profile. It's acting as their CV. They're not actively looking for a new position, but it's sitting there. And they might be wondering, why do I need a LinkedIn profile when I'm not looking for a job? Um, and actually, what's happening is I'm getting headhunted, and this is distracting. It's filling my inbox up, and I don't want to know. So that's an interesting scenario as well. We also have the sales professionals, um, who are looking to um, build their sales, get to know more people, have more appointments and ultimately sell their products. But are their prospects able to learn about their products on, the, on their profile? And are people actually relating to them as individuals? Or again, have they got a CV-based profile where they're talking about how, they are, how wonderful they are in their job, but not necessarily saying, this is what I want you to know about me. These are the products and services I want you to know that I do. Um, you've also got the HR people. And this is a great one. Um, employer branding, um, I'm sure most of you heard of it by now. It's a new term that's come out in the last sort of five to ten years um, about making a place look like an exciting place to work and attracting the best talent. Um, again, your LinkedIn profiles of your employees and that of your company uh, profile, all of these things contribute towards your employer branding. Are you an interesting place to work? Are you progressive? 
are you somewhere where the top talent actually wants to be? And I would suggest that most top talent would know about LinkedIn, the importance of LinkedIn and networking. And if you approach them but you don't have your profile sorted out, they're instantly going to get an impression that perhaps you're not a great company to work for because your employer brand is just, the branding is just very, very low on, on LinkedIn. So that's why it's really important. We then have uh, the recruiters. These are the recruiting agencies. Are they actually standing out as relevant to the marketplace and using the top tools in the marketplace? We actually run a social recruiting program for HR directors and talk about employer branding and such. And they actually say now that they can do pretty much the job of a recruiter themselves. And recruiters, a lot of them aren't using LinkedIn. And they are. And so they're finding the best talent that the recruiters aren't. Um, and again, it's how does the recruitment agency look online? I know of someone who was looking for a job, and he got lots of uh, approached by lots of people. And the first thing he did was go and look at their LinkedIn profile and check out how they looked. And he said, anybody who didn't have a profile sorted out, that didn't look good and professional, he said, I didn't contact them. They were of no interest in me. I wanted to only work with and take a job from, or even just go and have an interview with, a company that actually had their LinkedIn profile sorted out. The top talent is getting really, really savvy to this now. And recruitment agencies are really having to step up to this as well. Um, and also for those fundraising, those involve uh, are are you is your is your profile involving people in your message and your cause, and actually getting them to buy into the why of what you do and want to be part of it, or again you've got a CV based um, profile and it's just not really doing anything for you. Um, so the question always comes down to. What does it say about you? What does your profile say about you? What is the key message it's putting out? So of all these scenarios I've said, there are different ways people do their profile. And you're either saying, I don't really care about my company or my brand very much, or it says, I, um, I've got more better things to do than put out my LinkedIn profile, or it says, I'm looking for a job, or it's just not really, or, it, or it's doing it really well, and it's saying, hey, this is the cause I stand for, this is the business I represent, this is what I want to be known for, you should learn some more about me, um, this is our products and services, here's our information, is it of interest to you, how can I serve you, how can I help you? A lot of things we've covered in the other, pro other sessions about how to really connect with people on, on, on your profile. So those are the different scenarios that we want to be looking at and, and having an up-to-date LinkedIn profile is really, really important for everybody because even if you're employed and not looking for a job, at some point you will be looking for a job and having your profile filled out now means that not only can you, um, you don't have to update it later but people can find you now but also you can stay off the radar. <laughs> so if you go and link, start updating your LinkedIn profile then your employer might wonder what's going on and why you're suddenly doing that. So and again, it reflects on your personal brand as a person and how seriously people are going to take you. And if you're employed as a salesperson, again, you really want to have that sorted out. Um, so the next slide, um, which is, okay, so there's different strategies you can be using on LinkedIn, which we've discussed before. So you've got your active strategies where you're actively connecting with other people on, on LinkedIn and actually reconnecting with people you know and reaching out to people who perhaps you don't um, and also commenting on discussions and commenting on discussions is a great way of being proactive on LinkedIn or active on LinkedIn and, and getting people to know about you and then you've got your proactive strategies which is when you're asking proactively asking for introductions to the people you want to be contacted with perhaps sending emails um, or you're actually receiving referrals a lot of people say to me my business relies on word of mouth recommendation and I would ask you, if you are getting lots of word of mouth recommendation, what's the first thing that somebody does when they hear about you? They Google you. And when they Google you, what comes up second or third in the results of your name? LinkedIn profiles. And they will find your LinkedIn profile very, very quickly. And most people are now are getting to the point where they actually go on LinkedIn as a first step and, and look you up. And the question is, what are they going to find when they see you? What information are they going to see on your profile? Um, and what's it actually telling you, telling them about you. And if they are just suddenly newly connected with you or they've seen you comment in a discussion and they, they're curious, they're all going to come back to your profile, which is your passive strategy. So everything you do can, always comes back to your profile. And we call your profile your passive strategy because it really is a case of set and forget. Once it's set, um, you can just leave it there and it will work for you 24-7 
um, as as a billboard basically. So your profile is a 24/7 billboard, always talking about you. It's always there. It's easy to find. It's basically an advertisement that you don't have to pay for. But be careful with what I just said. There, I probably shouldn't have just used the word advertisement because you do not want to be advertising on your profile. You've got to be making a personal connection with people. Um, so your profile is your often the first impression somebody has of you. Even if they meet you networking and they like you face to face, they're most likely going to come and connect on LinkedIn and they're going to check you out. And if there's a difference between what they see online and the person they met, they're going to be curious. They're going to wonder about it. And it actually can put people off. It also makes it very, very hard to refer someone. If I want to refer somebody forward and their profile is not of high quality, I'm not going to do it. Not only because I teach people how to do their profiles, but also because their bad impression online will reflect back on me too. And it's all about transferring my trust and my credibility through this other person. So I want to be really, really careful um, who I'm referring. So this is another reason why it's really important to make sure your profile is good. Um, it's also the opportunity to make a presentation to your prospect. This is where it gets super interesting. You would have heard us say on our previous webinars that 60% of the buying, um, the buying decision is made online. This is because now people can Google information and they can see customer reviews and see what people are saying about the product. And it's only at the last minute when they, they're starting to think, oh, should I buy this? Is this the right fit for my company? I need to talk about myself and ask the person directly, will this work for me? That they will actually pick up the phone to you and talk to you. So if your information is not available, they will go to your prospect. If your information doesn't, um, your competitor rather, if the information isn't available, they'll go to your competitor. If they don't like the information they see, they'll go to your competitor. Um, at the moment, you might find that people are a little bit more forgiving because LinkedIn is only just starting to, to take shape really in this area. And your competitors might not be on there. But trust me, you want to be ahead of your competition. You don't want to be left behind. This is something to get on with right now. Um, and you also want to make sure that that presentation is engaging as well with, with your in, your prospect, that it's actually something that makes them build rapport with you, which we'll go into a bit more in a minute. This is your personal brand. This is people's impression of you. Um, personal branding has become a massive issue um, and a conversational piece since the advent of social media because we all now have a, a personal brand, whereas before we would have hidden behind the brand of the company we worked for, we now actually have our own brands and we have our own message that we stand for and all of our career going back, all the things that we've done, actually kind of needs to make sense. Like how did our career progress? What were the things that we did? How is this making us credible for the job that we're doing today? Um, so personal branding, really, really important. And this also ties into your company branding. Again, if you've got employees in your company and their profiles are not um, consistent, with everybody else's in terms of what they say about the company, um, that will reflect badly on your company. People will look around and see who works for you um, and who they might know, and they're going to be looking at the different profiles, and they'll be going, oh, they say something different on this profile to what they said on that profile. They could be, each person could be communicating what the company does, but not necessarily in the right way, and not necessarily using the words that pitch your company at its best. And most companies spend a lot of money getting that pitch right and getting a copywriter in to write the content on their website. And yet each of the individuals within the company who have no experience on how to pitch the company or write about the company are actually doing it on your behalf. And they're putting it out into the marketplace. And those results mostly come up higher in search engine results sometimes in your actual website. So ensuring that you have consistent profiles with the consistent information is really important. And again, if they have a CV-based profile, that probably means that your top talent, the person you spent ages recruiting and training, is probably getting headhunted. Why? It's the message they're putting out there. They're saying, I'm really great. You should hire me. These are my skills. And you, you really want to sort of stop that from happening by making sure that they have a consistent profile. Now, obviously, the profiles, they belong to the individuals. Um, how are you going to get them to actually hand their profile over to you? There's a science to it. There's a way of doing it. And that's something we can actually help you with. Um, it's actually in their favor to do so because, again, it's their personal brand. And it will help them to um, do better in the job they're currently doing, especially if they're in sales. But also, when they're ready to move forward, they've got a really slick-looking profile. So it is in their best interest, and there is a way around it. 
um, to make um, and just making sure that you've got that consistency throughout all the profiles is really important. And again, when you think about how connected everybody is and how many people each of those different individuals know, that is the number of people that are seeing this information. So if you have some a video introducing your company on all of the profiles of the people working for you, your reach now, your ability to get that seen and get your name known is now a lot higher than it was previously. Um, okay, so now we're moving on. This is a really interesting point. This one gets me really, really excited. So I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to explain it. Human beings are programmed to stereotype and pigeonhole people to make sense of the world. Therefore, it is our personal responsibility to ensure that the information we share with the world puts us in the holes we want to be in. Okay, so we all know as human beings we're on information overload. We are always being pelted with information all the time. And we need to filter this information and make sense of it really quickly. It's just the way we're designed. We stereotype, we filter, and we start pigeonhole people saying, oh, that person's a doctor, that person's a consultant, that person's a consultant of leadership, that person's a consultant of medical stuff. Um, and we're constantly chunking down, trying to make sense of the world. Now, we have the opportunity with LinkedIn to either be put in the wrong pigeonhole and someone just assume, ah, oh, that person's an actress. Or um, they can assume, oh, we're a business consultant. And it's actually our personal responsibility how we code the information on our profile to ensure that we actually come across right. I just want to tell you of a quick story of someone I spoke to a couple of weeks ago. And um, she was a business consultant, extremely qualified and highly regarded within her field. And um, she had decided a year ago that she was going to step out and be an actress. She'd always wanted to be an actress, and she, she absolutely went for it. She was a business consultant in the creative arts, and so everybody she spoke to face-to-face -to -face totally backed her, thought it was absolutely wonderful. And she was a real shining example of somebody who um, was willing to get over their limiting beliefs and just go for it. So it was doing her the world of good having done this. And in a year, she'd actually put together a whole showreel of all the different acting um, sort of jobs that she had done, uh, mostly amateur at this stage, but it was a brilliant showreel that she could use um, for trying to get acting jobs. And she put it on her LinkedIn profile because, as I'm not sure if many of you know this, but a lot of um, acting agencies use LinkedIn to find um, find their talent and in, in, interact with their actors and actresses. So she, she rightly put it on her LinkedIn profile. Um, there was just one problem. <laughs> um, although when she was standing in front of someone, she could explain what she did, there was a massive disconnect between what people who didn't know her saw. So when I was talking to her, when I, before I spoke with her about her profile, I looked at all of her stuff and I watched her acting video and I was quite excited. I was going to speak to an actress and maybe I'd seen her in something. So I watched the whole three-minute show reel and um, then I went down and I saw that she had another video for her um, business and I looked at that and I was like, oh, okay, kind of believe in you, kind of don't. And then I went down to the next thing and realized that she was part of a profile, um, a profiling she, she, she was an expert in a profiling tool that I'm very, very familiar with. And I was like, oh, oh, that kind of doesn't make sense now because now I'm seeing that she's actually really good at this, but I just she's an actress and I don't really get this video where she's being all bubbly on the screen. Is she acting now or is she serious? Is she a business coach? I don't get it. But obviously we had time booked in, so I took the time to ask questions and know about her. With me, she was at an absolute advantage because I was giving her my time. Most people don't give you the time. They quickly move on. And so when she was talking to me and I was asking her the questions, I actually had to stop myself and actually say, this person I'm speaking to isn't who I thought I was speaking to. And I had to do a complete reframe in my brain that actually the person that I had pictured for myself or got, oh, okay, this, this must be who she is. When it actually came to talking to her, I actually had to change it and say, oh gosh, this person isn't who I thought. She actually is completely different. So we had to change her profile around, and uh, we had to put her business consulting at the top. And actually, we put, um, my recommendation was to put the, the, the profiling tool at the top, because then people would pigeonhole her. Ah, she's, she's a, um, that profiling tool expert, and that's the first thing we know. So it's not just a general business person. She's a profiling tool expert. Then she's a business consultant, and that's how she does her business consulting within, within this framework. 
oh, and now she's got this acting thing, which is the third thing. And she has a great story and a great reason for why she was doing the acting. But it was about tying it all together and um, telling, telling us all that why that you would tell people normally face to face, but telling us that in the summary and helping people to get buy-in and supporting her in her acting career, which we knew was very, very possible. People were very up for supporting her. But just because the way she was presenting it the first time around, it was actually going against her. Whereas switching the order around, writing the summary, it completely changed the way that I, the, what, with the way people will perceive her and actually take her as a credible expert. So I'm hoping you can actually see there that how credible switches around depending on the first piece of information you give them and also the emphasis you put on something. If you put emphasis on something that's actually a tiny fragment of what you do, don't be surprised when people think that you're all about this other thing and that's what you care most about. It's actually all down to what information we put out there. And you have the ability to put yourself out there as either an absolute expert at what you do that someone should have definitely be in touch with and they'd be honoured to have you in their workplace compared to someone who's like, yeah, well, maybe she's good, maybe she's not good. I'll just find five other people and I'll interview all of them and I'll decide from there. Now, you might think that that's just the person making the buying decision, saying, I'll interview everyone and I'll decide the best person. But actually, um, if you do a really good job with your LinkedIn profile, you can be the top of the pile and the person they're most excited to work with. And how you create that impression in their minds? Again, it's the information that you put on there and how you put that information on, on your LinkedIn profile. It's entirely up to you. And we're not talking about fabricating it or lying about it. We are literally talking about, um, you know, just wording it better and presenting it better. So I, um, I have some quick points here to run through with you. Um, write your profile for your audience. Always have them in mind as to what it is that they need to know. What is the thing they need to know in order to be interested in what you're offering? Do not write it for yourself. Always think about the message and then um, explain who you are. And if you do have uh, a mixture of backgrounds, um, write in there why, what your story is, how you got from A to B. Um, best not to start off with your story though, like because your your experience that is your story. Your experience will tell the story of how you progressed through your career. But if you've got anything that doesn't quite gel together, if you're not sure about, then you can just write a very short paragraph explaining your why, your mission statement, why you do what you do, and how you transition from one thing to another. Um, and let people know what it is, that, the problem that you solve for people. Engage your audience. Use rich media content, sort of videos and downloads and presentations, um, a ways of them really starting to engage with you and learn more about what you do. And also help them to engage with you as a person, a three-dimensional character, by putting something personal about yourself on your profile. And I've got a great example of this in a minute that I want to show you. Um, add value and have a call to action. What do you want people to do as a result of coming to your profile? Do you want them to give you a call? Do you want them to send you an invitation? Do you want them to join your mailing list? Have a process where you're guiding people through your profile um, and telling them what you want them to do as a result of coming there. Make sure your presentation, your profile is really well presented. I'm going to go into some of that in a second. Um, and check how you're perceived. It's really, really important that you ask people, what is it you think I do? Because sometimes, and I do these sessions, like 20 sessions a week, and I read people's profiles, and then I ask them, so tell me what it is you do. I can see from your profile what you say you do, but I love to see how, how that actually matches up. And when I ask a person what they do, the amount of thing, times it doesn't match or they put too much emphasis on something else that change, that, as I was saying with the example before, too much emphasis that changes my perception of them or um, that there's actually way more detail, there's way more problems that they solve, way more passion, way more um, things that they could be putting on there that really help people to understand who they are. So ask people, what, it is, what do you think it is that I do? What do you think my unique selling proposition is? How do I how do I stand out from the competition and ask them and be really careful to listen to what they say um, and look for things that you can change on your profile to make sure your message is really communicated just the way that you need it to be. Um, so I'm just going to jump off now and I think it'd be really great to go onto LinkedIn itself and uh, start looking at some profiles. So I'm going to look at Keith. Keith and I um, had a chat today 
about his profile and he's very kind to um, offer me his profile. So the first question I have before starting my call with um, Keith today, my actually my first assumption was Keith's looking for a job. He, if you look at his summary, he's an outstanding individual with a customer-centric understanding of who is highly experienced in developing strategic solutions for increased client engagement. Brilliant. This guy is all about client engagement. He wants to make sure that clients are well taken care of inside of an organization. Um, when we scroll down, we see here his um, head of client services for Black Isle Group, and we learn that they are um, into helping people, it's, it's coaching, consulting, leadership sort of stuff. And he works with some of the major banks, law firms, professional services. Brilliant. Um, just one problem. Um, when I spoke to Keith, he was really, he told me actually he's really into what he does at um, Black Isle Group and providing the service. And the customer engagement is actually what he does in the job. It's not a service he provides. So if we go back up to the top and we look at his headline, he is really passionate about creating client responsiveness, accessibility, and personalized value-added services. But for a coaching organization where he actually is the person taking care of the clients and making sure that they are engaged with, that he's responsive to them and he adds value, how relevant is this statement really to them? It's really not. If he is a consultant that teaches people how to do, to engage with their clients, it's spot on, it's perfect. But actually his job, that, that's what he does within his job he's, and he's actually all about uh, the coaching and consulting. So that needs to switch around because this is um, CV based at the moment. If he wanted another job as a head of client services, um, then yeah, he'd he'd want to he'd want to put that on. Now, Keith isn't looking for a new job at the moment, and he's very happy where he is. But should he at any time want to move on, and he is passionate about client services, and he might maybe wants to move on inside of client services, this statement's really important. So putting it in his summary as one line is really really good. Because it lets people know, I'm happy in my job, I'm passionate about client services, I'm not just here playing around, I'm passionate about it, um, and I'd like to do more in it. So he would most likely get um, offered a job um, based on the fact that he's actually got that on his profile. Um, and so, so yep, I definitely made that recommendation to him. The other thing was, is he's got here, really interesting, co-founder and community manager of Worthing Dads. Um, this is a really great uh, voluntary project that he's part of, and uh, we did discuss that, yeah, actually he could put that down in the voluntary section now. Um, however, it's, it really it does say an awful lot about him that family is really, really important. It's all about free and flexible a network for dads who can meet up during the week. Um, really, really lovely, great idea. It communicates a huge amount of his values. The only issue with it is that it's not mentioned anywhere but here. And it's about being able to put things in context and understand uh, where a person is coming from. So with that said, um, I think it should stay in his experience. And just up in his, in his summary, he can actually say, I co-founded um, Worthing Dads because I believe and I want to see and therefore I do this. Um, and we actually learn about him as a three-dimensional person. He's not just um, this consultant anymore or this person selling consultancy. He is actually a three-dimensional character and we can actually see what his family values are and connect with him on that way and it can really help build rapport with the person looking at our profile. Um, when you do, you have multiple clients and multiple things, I want to show you, I think I'll go with Stephanie's profile. Um, this is Stephanie Bitesaw, she helps people determine what their niche is um, and really drill down to what, it, what problem they solve in the world and why they're doing what they're doing. Um, so Stephanie's got a really nice, hello, as you probably spotted from my, he my headline, I wear a few hats. So she's very warm and bubbly and she's welcoming people. She's got a lot of personality coming through straight, uh, straight away. And so she says she wears many hats. So what does she do about it? She actually puts in a subtitle, uh, what do I do? And she's number one, I do Nishonomy, founder of Nishonomy. Number two, I'm a founder of Aussie Entrepreneurs. Point three, I'm a board member of Ruby UK. And she goes on to explain um, what each of those things do. And then she connects it all together and invites people to be in touch if they're interested. And you come down and she's got it all worked out. She tells us a little bit more about the philosophy of how she works. Absolutely brilliant. She's got some rich media content in there. So she's got um, those bits of feedback and stuff here. 
And then if I just look at Nikki's profile, she's kind of done the same thing. Um, she says uh, the types of people she works with, working, if I just highlight there, working with workplace teams. She says that you can reduce stress, boost communication, and help people play happily together. And she actually gives us some statistics of the results that she chooses. And then she's got another little market, working with consultancy practice owners. So she does the same thing. And then working with professionally qualified individuals. She does the same thing again, how specifically she works with those people. The only thing I'd say to Nikki, actually, is it doesn't stand out. Um, as you saw on um, Stephanie's profile, she's numbered it, and she's also used capital letters to make a headline. I would strongly recommend that you do the same thing, because the I, when you look at a profile, the first thing you do is look at the photo, the name, you scroll down, and you look at the summary, and you're looking for things to jump out at you. If you've got, and the, the, the length of the paragraphs are absolutely perfect because they're not too much information. You can just jump in and see different bits. But it's about having things um, stand out to you. And on Stephanie's, instantly, without reading much, I don't even have to read the beginning bit there. I can go, founder of, da 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 da, -da. Okay, those are the things she does. And then look down at her rich media content. And I go, this person looks interesting. And then generally, the person will actually come right back up to the top. And then they'll read the headline. Um, and then they will start reading it more in detail. And if they like that, they'll actually start watching the media, rich media content. So, Nikki, the only thing I'd say is these paragraphs that really work, I would definitely make them stand out. Because when I revisited the profile just then, as it came up on the screen, I wondered if I was in the right place. I was like, where are those points gone? Um, and it will just make it stand out from all the other paragraphs. Now, I don't normally recommend that people put their summary of their career in, because the experience does it for them. But here, what Nikki's done is she said, after 18 year career in finance, accumulating in a finance director role, I left the corporate world to help small businesses. So it's a one, it's a one very short paragraph that explains her why, her background, and why she came forward. I've seen other people, they write the whole career history. And it's like, I know, it's a new experience. That's not what you need to tell me right now. Um, and then she says, my focus, focus is helping you get stuff done. So she's straight into the, the problem that she's solving there. Um, now, just one other profile I want to show you is Mike's profile. Um, and again, these are all quite good ones because they've been well thought through. And they don't have some of the normal stuff I correct on people's profiles. But on this one, I actually had to, after Mike um, gave me permission to use his profile, I had to actually go back to him and say, sorry, what is it you, you want to be known for? Which is great because actually he is utility warehouse on this profile he wants to be known as utility warehouse the reason why I asked the question was because I could see here that this uh, Warren Clifford property solutions is still present he's still working here and he's still working as a consultant and I was thinking well wouldn't you want it to be known for that wouldn't you want that to come out as more um, because most of his network will be on LinkedIn and a lot of his referrals will be on be able to come through LinkedIn. So why wouldn't he want to to make that, that a bigger thing? So I had to go and ask him, and um, which is which is fine. Um it actually is he wants to be more known for his his uh, utility warehouse. That's what he wants to use his LinkedIn profile for. So that's really great. But this is a great example that actually if that was a secondary thing, a thing you did on the side, just writing this about the sisters practice is not the property practice is really not enough. Um, you would really want to put in there the why, what the problem is that you solve for people, and, and give much more information like you saw in Nikki and Stephanie's profile, and then you'd want to shift it around. But for, for Mike, that's actually what, what he wants right now. He wants everyone's attention to be on to, to distributor. The only thing I'd say to you, Mike, on this one is I had the question, and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. They're out of whack. Why would you do one and not the other? Um, why do you want to be known this and not what you're actually qualified in? Um, and that's absolutely fine. I would just put a summary in and just give a little bit of background as to why you are now pushing the independent distributor of utility warehouse. Um, they're a great organization. They're a great way of helping people get financially free and just getting an extra bit of income in. Um, and so I'm sure there's a reason why you're doing it that you're passionate about. And just being able to communicate that passion in your summary will actually help people to buy into you and why why they should work with you and they can choose any um, authorized distributor if they wanted to but if you have a why and a vision that's strong enough they'll choose you over anybody else um, so that's just something to be aware of if you are selling your services 
really put way more in if that's what you want to be known for. Really talk about the problem that you're solving. Um, so that's, I'm just going to see what questions we have. If you have questions, please do let me know. Okay, so Carol says, I'm a speaker and a consultant, so I have two audiences, meeting planners and medium-sized business owners. Any suggestions on how I might address both in my summary? Okay, speaker and consultant. Um, Carol, do the, does what you speak about lead into what you consult about? Um, because if they do, they're just two different products and um, services of the same thing. Um, if they are separate, then tell us why you do both. Um, let us know what's your rationale behind it. And most probably, there's a core reason for why that drives you in both. And if you're not sure what it is, I recommend Stephanie, because that's what she does. <laughs> um, but there's a way of communicating that across. If you want to just type back in there, actually, um, a little bit more about what the speaking is and what the consulting is, I can be much more specific for you. Um, and I'll come back to that in a second. Um, let's just see if you've done it. Oh, yeah, she says, yes, corporate culture. Okay, so they are actually the same thing. So I'd imagine that Talking about corporate culture from the stage actually leads to introductions um, into doing the one-to-one -one consultancy work and getting inside the companies. So um, it's exactly the same thing. So you can say I deliver my message either by speaking and I do it in-house as well. You can engage me here or engage me there. I can do this or that um, and just let people know, let people know that way because um, they are the same thing. So just talk about it as what different services you provide. Um, Okay, so principles of good profile. I'm going to wrap this up really quickly because, as usual, the time is running away with me. Um, good profile is to, you need to always be focused on the problem that you solve. So Nikki, you saw there, her profile really focused on the problems she solved. Um, serving the individual business. Serving, I, that's a typo. Oh, dear. So, serving the individual business. Like, What is it you're serving them? How are you, how are you supporting them? Um, try and be relevant and timely. Um, some uh, talk to problems they're currently solving. Try and avoid jargon. Um, leadership development is a great term, but it's also jargon. Um, try and talk about the issues that leaders are having that are relevant today that you're actually going in to solve. Um, and talk about talking problem term in words that actually will make someone's ears go, "Oh, I was talking about that the other day." Or, "Oh, yeah, I have that problem." And um, so that it's actually really relevant to them and the situation they're currently in. Um, your profile should show you as credible and trustworthy. This is why recommendations are great. That starts you off as trustworthy. And credible is your experience. Make sure you've filled in all your background experience that you've, and all the jobs you've done. Not all of them. There are some I would say you don't need. And actually, I have one job on there that I, I don't have on there, simply for the fact that it's confusing. I know why I did it from a personal development point of view, but on the profile, someone would look at it and go, <laughs> but that's okay. If it was a CV, I would put it on there, but I don't need to. Um, this is all about creating the right brand image. Um, so, yep, fill in your background. That is your credibility. Um, guide people where they should go next. What is the next thing you want them to do as of reading your profile? Do you want them to download a book? Do you want them to join a mailing list? Do you want them to phone you up? Let people know. And actually, I'm just going to go back to the profile. I saw on Mike's profile. He has got a great statement here for how to get in touch with him and all the different things that he's got going on. Um, and I have got the same on mine. So I'll scroll down my profile. Um, I say, thank you for contacting me. My aim is to develop a quality network on LinkedIn of people I know, personal choice, that I know, like, and trust. If we don't know each other yet, then please do be in touch letting me know in your introduction message what you'd like to be in contact about. I'd be delighted to be in touch and value any way I can. And I also say on there that if people want to chat with me, they can also book an appointment, and there's a link to do so. Um, because I love it when you'll book in and want to talk to me personally, so please do so <laughs> if you'd like to. Um, uh, where people should go next, yep, and review your profile periodically. Make sure it's always reflecting where you're up to and your latest thinking. Um, I reckon about every three months, I changed mine the other week. I haven't changed jobs. I haven't changed what I'm doing. I've just refined and, and got rid of a few distractions. So um, I just wanted to change it. So make sure there's nothing on there distracting, especially if you have a big emphasis on a project that you're no longer working on or you don't want to be known for. Just go back and change the summary. It can still be in your experience. It is something you did. And it's something people can have a conversation with you about. But just make sure that summary doesn't mention anything that would distract people from the message you want them to know right now. 
Um, okay, and I'm just going to check Andrew's question here. Andrew has a question. I get endorsed, acknowledged for skills, etc., from people who don't know me. Doesn't that reduce the credibility of it? Yes, Andrew, it does. Um, <laughs> my mother endorsed me for something the other week, and I was like, you've never seen me do that before. How would you know? So I didn't accept it, and that's absolutely fine. You don't have to accept endorsements, and I only take endorsements from people who've actually seen that skill in action. Um, so even though my mother can say I'm credible about something, I'm like, well, you've never seen me do it. So thanks very, very much. Really kind of you, but I'm not going to take it. Um, and you actually have the ability within endorsements to take out words that don't represent you, that you don't want to be known for. You can edit them, and you can suggest things. And you can take, if you've got people endorsing you for things that you actually now decided, I don't want that person to have me endorsed there, you can actually delete them and have it not show that they endorsed you for that skill. Um, so they're, they're, even though there's like, it's a really challenging piece of kit because it's, people just, endorse you for stuff, you are actually able to manage it now by taking out words you don't want to be known for, adding in new ones, and deleting comments and stuff you don't you don't want to know. Um, okay, so well presented, really obvious stuff, people. Let's have a professional photo. Let's see your face, the whole of your face. Um, let's not have you far away where I can't see you, because part of building a relationship with you and feeling like I know you is to know what you look like. Um, and also, it's not okay to have a sort of sexy thing picture, and it's, well, you just need to be professional. <laughs> Actually, there's a little science in that as well, that if I had more time, I would, I would definitely go into the picture a bit more. Um, write in the first person, this is you talking to people. Um, use clearly defined and short paragraphs. We've seen some excellent examples of that with the profiles I've shown you today. Just think about how you feel when you see a 15-line paragraph. Would you read it, or would you just feel, ugh? It's exactly the same thing. You want to make it quick and easy and have things jumping out so people can quickly see the value of reading. Um, use of headings, if necessary, which we were just talking about. Um, check for drip grammar and typos, let other people read through your work. Um, and use capital letters in the traditional places. Some people think that uh, it's a style choice to not use capital letters. It is when you can choose the font, the colors, the size, and all those kind of things. But within the environment of LinkedIn, where you are set on what you can, put in and where you can put it, it actually just looks like you don't know proper English. As much as you might think, yay, I'll do it my way, check the perception of how other people see it, because if you're writing your school name or whatever without capital letters, they'll just think it was a really rubbish school, um, which you might want them to think, but it reflects on you. So capital letters in all the right places, there's no, there's no room for style choice here, unfortunately. Um, and connect to your company profile. And actually, I have people asking this a lot, so I'm going to go and do this right now for you to see. Um, so currently, I work. Where am I? Gosh, my profile's long. <laughs> okay, still not there. Still not there. Okay, now there. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go and change the company I work for here. Um, what I'm going to do is. I can click where you see it says I'm in inside the experience bit now. Really connect to where I work for. Change the company. It deletes. So I want the logo to appear next to that that job I do, and a company profile does exist. So the company I work for is called Really. So we've got lots of uh, suggestions coming up, and I connect. Oh my gosh, where's it gone? <laughs> that is so. Oh, I've misspelled. That's why. There we go. So it's actually predicting it for me now. When it predicts, it means that you are connecting. So you click on the prediction, and then it actually will have connected. And if it hasn't connected, it's because you didn't click on the drop down. Then you just press save, um, and you're good from there. So if I want to just change that and say, I work for AXA, um, you can see that I can choose which one it is, and I can do that, and there it is. But I'm, I don't right now. I'm going to press cancel. Um, okay. So, um, doo -doo -doo, that's that one, and there are a few more questions coming in. We're just, I'm, I'm coming to the end of the content, actually, so do start piling in with your questions, because that's what we're going to cover in a second. Make sure you put your um, company information, uh, your contact information, how you want people to connect with you. Um, so, reality check. Ask people, what do they think they, that you actually do? Ensure that you have the right emphasis on the right parts of your profile, the important parts. 
ask people, are people following your call to action? Do they actually understand what you want them to do next? Is it simple and obvious? Get someone to read your profile through for you and notice any um, inconsistencies. Um, okay, so just I'm going to come back to questions in a second, but just really quickly, I want to let you know the next steps from this webinar and how we can help you. Um, we have a course called LinkedIn 101, uh, which I'm just going to bring up on the screen because I know a lot of you have been asking about it. This is an introductory course to LinkedIn, and we will be going over your profiles in a great detail um, and, really, and giving you some really key strategies that you can be getting on with um, and really connecting with people and putting into practice a lot of the things that we've talked about on our webinars. So that's reallyconnect.com forward slash LinkedIn 101. Um, if you want to go and have a look at that yourself. Um, and you can see here we've got some guarantees and some testimonials and stuff. Um, that's a really great course. I totally recommend it to you. If you are from a big organization, um, you might prefer our in-house training solution. Um, we also have a social selling program and social recruiting. Social recruiting is fantastic if you are using the recruiter seat, if you are looking to employ people and get your employer branding correct. Um, and we also have LinkedIn for charities helping you raise money through LinkedIn. And we also have an exciting project called the One Million Pound Challenge. So for certain organizations, we will actually gamble our fees and guarantee that we will bring you a hundred, um, one million pounds worth of new business into your pipeline, um, but it, within one year. So there's loads of loads of options there, but the question is which option is right for you and which one is right for your organization. And so if you know straight away, yep, there's something that I want to do, our website has all of it on there. And if you're saying, no, that's not for me, but I'll stick around for questions, great. And if you're like, oh, yeah, I do need to do something, I understand my personal brand is important. I understand that um, the impression, I might be making the wrong impression out in the world, and I actually would love to get more proactive um, in reaching out and using this medium to find new business leads, then I recommend being in touch with myself. I'm very happy to offer you um, 45 minutes. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in recruitment, or if you're in sales, um, 45 minutes and we can go over your profile, your company objectives, what you're looking to achieve. Um, I can give you feedback directly on your profile and what I see, what I think you're doing, <laughs> and tell you then hear what you are doing, and we can make some changes and um, see what re make some recommendations on the best next steps. And sometimes that's just an open call. Sometimes people are fine just the way they are. Um, other times, you know, there's a real need for some in-house consultancy, um, and that that's really fun to do as well. So I'll just leave that on the screen for now, and um, I think the next appointment is probably a week away or so. But do 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 um, sign in if you think yeah this is something I proactively want to start doing. I want to start using LinkedIn properly, and I'd love to get some uh, feedback on how I can do that and what's going on with my profile. Then please do sign in for an appointment.